Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for staying for the last session. Um, uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, extending Yarn uh, to support uh, complicated workloads uh, other than the MapReduce. So firstly, uh, uh, some introduction about myself. Um, I built and uh, led Pivotal uh, um, originally and formerly EMC Green Plum uh, China Hadoop uh, team. And uh, I led and uh, shipped the first version of our HD products. And uh, later on, I started working on a few other projects. Uh, one of this is uh, uh, I'm the project I'm going to talk about today as well. It's OpenMPI on Hadoop. Uh, most recently, before uh, uh, Pivotal, I uh, worked for uh, EMC uh, Labs, and uh, I'm a regular speaker at the local uh, HAC and uh, some other uh, meetups. So uh, here's the slides about uh, uh, some industri uh, <coughs> industry perspective uh, about big data. So most people are probably already familiar with this, but uh, this perspective mostly around the enterprise uh, perception around uh, you know the building new products around the new use cases like uh, retail, financial uh, services, um, uh, manufacturing, uh, government, public uh, services, and uh, uh, a few other ones. And uh, one particular one I wanted to uh, highlight is the uh, um, healthcare and the life science. Uh, some of these are actually uh, in the past have been using uh, OpenMPI as a toolkit to uh, do their data analytics. So uh, this is a definition uh, uh, around the big data technology by uh, uh, Garner. Uh, it's a, the big data technology. It's just a, you know a, a, a defines it. A IDC defines it as a new generation of technologies and architecture uh, designed to economically extract value from a large volume of wide variety of data by uh, enabling high velocity capture, discovery, and so on. So uh, the, uh, on the right side of this graphic is, uh, is a picture from, uh, by uh, Delmir, is the ecosystem. So the, this slide actually uh, try to uh, highlight that uh, because of the uh, big data, uh, the commercial uh, industry started to uh, converge and uh, invest in uh, this uh, direction. So a lot of uh, companies are uh, invest a lot of money in building solutions in this direction. So, uh, so this is a more like a result of this. Uh, um, uh, this kind of, this definitely is not news. Uh, probably a lot of people already heard of this. So Hadoop will be in uh, most advanced analytics product by 2015. So, uh, so it's just to you know, show the direction that Hadoop become more mainstream, more heavy duty, production usage by the enterprise and the commercial industry. So uh, we see uh, a lot of workloads you know, as part of the result moving to Hadoop. So the workloads you know, more uh, gradually got diversifying. Uh, big data, real time, fast data analytics, and SQL on Hadoop. You know, uh, last year, uh, we already see a lot of uh, new projects and products are being built on top of uh, Yarn. And also, uh, we have a new uh, slew of you know, different paradigm, program uh, paradigms being uh, ported on uh, Hadoop. Once uh, uh, those are uh, uh, different from the traditional MapReduce, more batch nature uh, program model, like uh, more iterative uh, graph uh, analytics. And uh, another one is uh, MPI, is uh, for uh, HPC. So, uh, so this is a, uh, um, the uh, new generation Hadoop platform. Uh, so it's been already covered several times, so I just skip. So I just want to show that a lot of new uh, frameworks being built on top of Yarn. Yarn is being a central resource management layer for the cluster. So uh, my objective for this talk, though, is uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, to share our experience. Uh, we learned from uh, integrating OpenMPI on Yarn. And, uh, by addressing those challenges and the pain points, we uh, developed some extension uh, to Yarn. So it's basically to enhance uh, currently Yarn's two level of scheduling framework to allow uh, more complicated workloads to be able to uh, run on uh, Yarn. So uh, the last one I'm going to talk is uh, some thoughts on the future work we're planning for the next step. 
So this is agenda. Uh, first, it's a over, quick overview of architecture, uh, Young's architecture. So uh, just to show some, uh, we see uh, probably the limitations already uh, currently with, uh, with Young. And uh, next, I'm looking at two things. First is the resource scheduling for uh, at the application level for uh, complicated workloads. And uh, the third one will be uh, about at the job execution uh, layer is how do we uh, do the container delegation uh, to allow this uh, kind of uh, new uh, workloads. So uh, then after that, I'm going to talk about uh, OpenMPI on YARN as an example. We show some results and uh, uh, for that work. And the uh, last one, we'll be talking about the conclusion. So uh, basically, this is the architecture of YARN. Uh, so uh, um, uh, basically, uh, there is the uh, resource manager um, and the node manager. Basically, that's the YARN. And it's, uh, it's the central resource management layer. And the second is the uh, application master. So this one, I think, is pretty, pretty, pretty familiar to, to a lot of people already. So I'll probably just skip this to save more time. So uh, this is more like at the highlights level. You know, uh, YARN is... Uh, uh, two schedulers at two levels. One is the global resources scheduler. Um, uh, YARN is the uh, um, central uh, resource scheduler maintaining a, a global view of the resources. And it is a master slave architecture. Um, secondly, it's the application master. Uh, it's uh, basically a framework uh, for uh, the applications. Um, uh, the application master represents uh, the application to Yarn, so Yarn can manage the application lifecycle and also to maintain the uh, resources fairness and uh, the utilization across all the uh, applications. So uh, um, this is uh, more like a, a few more points on the resource scheduler. Uh, the uh, key thing here is the resource manager. Uh, it's uh, managing all the resources for all the applications. Um, so uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the main concern of the resource manager is to maintain the global view of the resources. The application side is more at a small scale uh, scope to manage a per application level. Uh, the resources at the runtime allocated, uh, allocated to application is, uh, is very dynamic. Uh, it's at the granularity of, of, of uh, container. Container actually is a boundary of resources. Uh, it's uh, 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 fungible, uh, replaceable. So it's just more come from the uh, abstraction of allowing a MapReduce task to run with it, within it. So for example, a container could be uh, 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 a definition of two CPU cores for uh, gigabytes of memory. And uh, okay, so the load manager is a slave demo on each node. So it's managing the uh, container lifecycle. So the life cycle basically means when uh, Yarn uh, uh, gives a resource to the application to run, uh, Yarn continue to actually, firstly, you ne uh, negotiate a reservation or lease from the resource manager. After that, the application master using that release uh, lease to bind to a task or process. And the load manager will continue on to managing the whole life cycle to track uh, the resource usage of particular uh, container. So uh, currently, um, uh, Load Manager use uh, platform specific code to directly uh, uh, start, kill, monitor the, the, the user uh, uh, processes. So uh, it's clearly coupled to a platform. So this is how to, uh, some highlights. Uh, from an application development point of view, uh, Yarn actually exposes a very different view of resources. So it's a totally you know, uh, uh, departure from the original you know, MapReduce version one architecture. Originally, we have the familiar concept of nodes and the slots. So it you know, can directly map to a, a hardware or server that uh, you know, the nodes is uh, very easy to understand. But on a young, you can't do that anymore. Uh, and uh, for the resources being negotiated, it's very uh, dynamic. So it's also very uh, fine uh, grain resource model. So uh, you have to uh, build the resource pool 
on top of that, and you uh, map your tasks to it and uh, continue uh, and kind of uh, to negotiate more resources if anything goes wrong. So to manage the SOA, I mean, like uh, the availability, uh, HA, and uh, reliability, and uh, the whole line yards. So, uh, and also in the later version of Hadoop, uh, resources uh, uh, preemption also being introduced. So you have to handle, uh, you know, in the middle of the application running, you probably need to, uh, you know, handle the resource will be uh, revoked by the resource manager. On the uh, job execution side, right now Application Master is uh, the one Application Master to rule them all. Uh, them here, basically the tasks. So uh, Application does all the resource negotiation with Yarn, and all tasks and processes are actually managed from one master. Uh, so Application Master uh, directly uh, manage the pre-process life cycle. The load manager basically is a uh, 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 component to uh, execute um, upon the order given by application master. Uh, on the, each node, all the process or tasks being started is a, is a flat stru uh, structure. There's no parent or uh, controller process you know, on, the, on the slave's nodes. So this architecture, um, is sufficient for you know, map reduce, but it probably can be difficult for some other application frameworks. For example, like uh, 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 OpenMPI. I'm going to show a uh, runtime architecture of OpenMPI and uh, some other architectures as well, like uh, MPP. Uh, basically, you have a primary um, uh, server, and on the, uh, each node, you have a safe uh, server that controls local a process running on that nodes. So basically, it's more like a divide and conquer approach to address a more complicated workloads. But for uh, uh, this uh, map, map a kind of architecture is more centrally managed execution model. So, uh, okay, I will come back to the points uh, later in, in the upcoming uh, slides. So last track, uh, next, um, uh, uh, I will talk about uh, the uh, scheduling for uh, complicated workloads um, in the context of OpenMPI on Yarn. So uh, MPI resource model. I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with OpenMPI. Probably anyone have heard of OpenMPI? Great, great. At least we have quite a few. Okay. So uh, this resource model is not really uh, strange to many people. Because it's more familiar to other people. Like, you know, it's based on host uh, uh, slots. And, uh, and today I just discovered that uh, muscles probably also offer the resource to the application in uh, that concept that you have the host and the CPU, the resource you can use at the wrong time. But for Yarn, it's different. Uh, what you see is not a you know, host, it's, it's all container. It's a fungible abstract bundle of resources. Um, so uh, it's, it's very familiar with the MapRius version one. So it's uh, quite uh, easy to understand. Um, when the user needs to specify how many processes to start. So from the command line, you just uh, use the command line switch to say, uh, I want to run 10,000 processes. And OpenPI will does all the uh, mapping from the resources to up the process from processes to, to resources. Here, uh, uh, OpenPI doesn't say about the resource. Though. It's just you know on the native Bellman cluster, the resource is all given to this uh, you know HPC cluster to run. So there's nothing to negotiate. So uh, so the resources are uh, separate from the processes. So the resource can be oversubscribed. This is the OpenPI concept. Basically, when you uh, give uh, hosts and slots to, uh, to uh, uh, OpenMPI to run, you basically can tell OpenMPI whether you wanted to oversubscribe this certain number of resources. What it actually means is if at the runtime, OpenMPI finds out that the uh, given resource is not sufficient to run that number of processes, and they can kind of start or ping more than one processor on one CPU core. So that's it's more like a you know, subscription, over, uh, over subscription of the uh, hardware. Um, but for Yarn, that's not even possible because the container model is directly associated with the per process model. And on the scheduling side, um, 
OpenMPI, probably like a, other, uh, or a bunch of other uh, frameworks as well, they needed to have the uh, GAN scheduling. Basically, what it means is before the framework starts to execute those tasks, those can, resources needs to be already there before they can start to execute because uh, they usually is either too expensive or not possible to start a job against it. For example, uh, for uh, MPP, um, massive parallel processing databases, uh, when they build the core plan, uh, they already usually needs to have a, a physical resource uh, uh, topology already there for them to, uh, to generate a core plan. So if you do not have a resource model allocated for them, it's not easy to do. And for an uh, open MPI job to run, um, because the coupling of the processes uh, and the depend intro dependency of all the processes, so those processes need to be started all together. Otherwise, um, when they start to uh, uh, do synchronization between those or among the, uh, those processes, there's those processes not there, then you know, the, 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 the job won't be able to run. So, uh, so besides the GAN scheduling, there is a, uh, additional constraints probably uh, uh, the workloads need to or need to consider for for uh, for specific workloads. For example, the co allocation of the processes. In the past, in the Hadoop world, most people are talking about the you know data collocality, uh, uh, data uh, collocation uh, for uh, HPC and uh, the, the the compute centric point of view of the uh, uh, jobs. Collocation of processes is very important. And also there's on the interconnect networking side of things, you probably wanted to, you know, uh, to optimize the network communication bandwidth to, uh, for them to uh, share one common um, um, interconnect for, for the processes to communicate with each other. And also there's the latency of scheduling. Um, this probably you will need to consider additional uh, points like, uh, for example, the topology of the pr one particular machine, and this those optimization probably uh, specific to Open MPI or HPC work. So I probably skip that. And for uh, uh, MPP databases, just to mention one a few of them. So I probably just skip that. And uh, how do we do that though? So uh, we develop some uh, strategy or a uh, concept on that. Uh, how do we uh, address those problems? So you know for Lacking or uh, the consistent terminology, you know, in this, uh, you know, particular uh, uh, word of the application on yarn. So we're probably inventing or misusing certain concepts. So if you guys, you know, uh, have questions, you need to clarify. Probably just, uh, you know, ask. Um, so uh, uh, for uh, asking resources. Uh, on each individual container, we we'll continue to use the way uh, Yarn um, to uh, that currently supported by Yarn is to uh, use the current Yarn's model to uh, to uh, to uh, express this uh, uh, resource request. So basically, you can see it's it's very similar, but it's uh, hard is uh, is a fixed few of those attributes. Uh, in the uh, resource request, for example, the core memory and the location. Location is for uh, lo uh, you know to optimize for uh, a host local or rack local and uh, and things like that. So, uh, what from the uh, application or the task centric point of view, uh, what is more important is the intro container constraints. So it's more like container dependency. I mean, the task you want to manage the constraints that uh, you can satisfy before you run a task. So uh, we'll give a few examples uh, uh, what the inter, inter container constraints looks like. So, uh, so this one, um, it's just more like a, a key value pair uh, expression. So first one is the number of containers, uh, second is priority, and third is uh, uh, S, basically here means uh, slot. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good concept or Kind of introduce that uh, to give you a host view of the resources. So on each host, you could specify uh, the minimum uh, or maximum number of processes uh, located on uh, that particular host. Host, and uh, the last one is more like uh, on the uh, uh, SAOE site that uh, we give you 
some control points that how many runs uh, you want the scheduling uh, iterations uh, to run before uh, you want to fix, uh, force queue that process. So, uh, so another uh, concept that we introduced is the uh, allocation strategy or algorithm. Later on, I'm going to put all those concepts together and uh, to show uh, a framework of the scheduling APIs where uh, supporting high-level applications. So the uh, uh, allocation strategy basically means it's a, a iterative optimization algorithm for allocate, allocating resources uh, uh, for application. Here, uh, we're more uh, focused on uh, a group of container, a container group. So it's not, not on single container. That one is not interesting. So uh, per uh, st allocation strategy or algorithm, uh, we develop is actually to uh, you know, one particular strategy or algorithm is try to uh, optimize against one fixed set of constraints. For example, min max resource per load, or uh, and a few other ones. So uh, the allocation strategy al algorithm is reusable. Uh, this is a simple example, but I probably just uh, skip because most of people already it's too late in the <laughs> afternoon. So I I I'm, myself you know, can I explain in detail. As well. So anyway, just to show some taste, some taste of the algorithm. It's iterative, kind of going run and run, and uh, uh, you know after a few of the things, probably either satisfied or uh, the uh, maximum amount of runs already being uh, 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 expired or things like that. It's more like a termination condition for iterative algorithms. So you could have a, a way to uh, you know f for this algorithm to uh, uh, terminate at a given. Uh, time. So uh, the, 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 the last concept we introduced is uh, uh, policy. Policy base, basically is for the application uh, to specify the requirements. So, uh, so you do not need to do uh, early binding to a specific you know, API level attributes that's directly tied back to the you know, Young's API. So we're going to give the uh, user another uh, uh, in, in, uh, in direction, so you could uh, you know, kind of express more naturally. So for example, I wanted to allocate uh, in total about 10,000, uh, 100,000 processes, uh, each of you know, the blah, 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 and for my uh, HPC job. And then uh, we'll do the translation into the constraints and uh, we'll find the right strategy or algorithm for you to, you know, to have this thing figured out. So this is uh, uh, the scheduler framework we developed. So, uh, so it's uh, iterative. So in the, the central piece is the scheduler. Uh, it is maintaining the heartbeat between the RM uh, and the scheduler. So the scheduler uh, provides high-level API. It's not a document on this, uh, probably on the top side of the uh, scheduler box, the, you know, the orange uh, kind of looking box. On the right side is the policy. It's uh, uh, the user specified requirements for that. And the scheduler will find out the uh, right combination of the algorithm and it will uh, do the uh, iteration driven by the heartbeat. And uh, basically the model, the patterns like this. For each round, uh, the scheduler will uh, 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 have the new uh, containers being uh, allocated from uh, the resource manager and uh, will uh, uh, provide that new and existing resources to the allocation strategy or algorithm and the algorithm will uh, uh, provide the uh, hints or suggestions what the uh, containers are uh, matching the requirements of the user as, as specified uh, uh, you know, policies and uh, will provide the hints that which a container doesn't match and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, to provide the hints to, uh, for, for the schedule to release. So it's just a more iterative um, pattern and it goes round and round and uh, until all the uh, 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 requirements being, um, uh, uh, being satisfied. So this is on a uh, high level scheduling uh, for the application masters, the application builds. They can uh, do uh, the, uh, they can just uh, send a request and then we'll you know, give back uh, a group of the containers that match their requirements. So this is one example we're developed for MPI job. Uh, so uh, Basically, what it says that uh, on the 
uh, API level uh, um, um, the user application specifies a few of the parameters to uh, the uh, the interface. Uh, basically, like uh, how many uh, containers you want, uh, that can be directly matched to the uh, matched to the uh, uh, dash uh, n p parameter. Basically, means the number of processes on the on each node. Uh, how even you wanted to uh, distribute the processes to each of these you know nodes. So min and max is a, you know upper level and uh, bottom level of the uh, limit, n limits of the containers running uh, per node, and or uh, some other control uh, switches to allow. Do you want to you know allow a fallback to uh, the random allocation if the uh, evenly scattered approach cannot be uh, satisfied, or some things like that, and. Uh, and a few other parameters like uh, the uh, runs as to allow you to control the latency allowed for uh, a one allocation. So the result is uh, uh, more like a group of the virtual host, hosts and with uh, the total specified, the specified total capacity. And then a MPI job can uh, go on, uh, map uh, the user process against those virtual nodes. So this is a summary. Uh, we uh, provide a high-level abstraction for the user-level application master for task-level scheduling. And basically, they, it's more like SOA-based scheduling, not really that SOA-based, but it's a word that's at least the one, that's the goal we're trying to, you know, uh, to, to, to do. And uh, the workload can do uh, to specify their requirements as policies. And the scheduling engine will work with Yarn for uh, the resource allocation. And uh, we're, uh, the, the, the framework is a, uh, it's a pluggable uh, architecture, so you can develop your own algorithms for a particular workloads. Mm. OK. Uh, I will move on to the uh, next uh, topic, is the container delegation. So uh, this is the uh, OpenPI uh, execution model. I'm not sure if you guys can see it clearly. Okay. So uh, on uh, this pink colored uh, box is the uh, OpenPI handle process. Uh, basically, it is more like an application master. It's managing uh, the job execution side of the OpenPI. And uh, this is on the master node. On each of the slave node on the uh, OpenMPI cluster, this is the um, ORTD. It's more like a job uh, task tracker in MapReduce uh, version one. So uh, basically, what uh, the flow the flow looks like this. So um, firstly, uh, open uh, the user specific uh, from the command line, the user uh, submits MPI job run. Uh, to HMP, uh, then uh, then the uh, process will start it as the handle process. So uh, the next step, what it does is it will do uh, the resource mapping on the static physical nodes. Uh, basically, mapping means to assign the user process uh, to each of the nodes. It could be by slot or by host. There is a different way of doing it. And after that mapping is done, uh, HMP will uh, start all the uh, slave demos on each of the nodes. Uh, those, what those demos does is actually to, uh, uh, to do the Y up for, uh, for the user process. What does, what y up that, what does uh, Y up mean though here? Y up basically means to establish the fabric uh, between those uh, slave demos and also the uh, user applications. The reason being that is the ORTD demo is, is the pieces that managing the uh, communication, the local process management, synchronization, and a lot of other uh, work. And one very particularly important aspect of the, uh, uh, the slave demos is actually to uh, launch the processes uh, at large scale. When you, uh, for example, uh, to uh, run uh, over 10,000 or even hundreds of thousands of uh, MPI processes on a large cluster. Then uh, how 
uh, much time it takes to actually uh, for the job to start to run, though, is very important because if you know, usually they, those guys will, will be very sensitive about the job start time. So you don't want to see that your job takes minutes or half an hour to just you know start it. So uh, so this is very important to have a very scalable architecture to allow the process to be launched. So it's a, there is a lot of innovation in the OpenPI community to address that problem. So for uh, for us, we you know do not want to really get into that, but but uh, okay. Um, so that's the runtime architecture of OpenMPI. So to run OpenMPI on Yarn, on how do we map this architecture to, to Yarn though? So uh, to allow those uh, slave demos to run on each of the nodes, uh, basically for uh, Yarn, we will probably need to have uh, EM, Average yeah. Master, only manage the slave nodes and uh, to to, uh, to manage the slave control process, basically the ORTD demo, and then uh, to allow the ORTD demo to manage this, its own uh, task, tasks rather than being all the tasks managed directly by uh, application master from uh, uh, the, the, the central places. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, unscalable, uh, and uh, it's, um, the latency can be a big problem for a uh, uh, large-scale uh, process launching. Uh, and uh, um, the second point is a little bit uh, subtle here. Is uh, in your uh, currently the uh, schedule works like this way. Um, it's basically like two parts of it. First, you get the resource leases. It's a reservation. And once you have negotiated all the leases and the resources, uh, you next, you will need to uh, use those resources. The concept in Yarn is to have the late binding of the leases to the tasks. So uh, for, for now, uh, uh, Application Master directly manage of those tasks. So these tasks has uh, Yarn has this concept of one-to-one -one, um, binding between the container and the task process. So for this uh, slave demos to run on each node, how do we actually to give the resources to this slave demo to use them, right? So if all the container is being mapped to one process, but when you allocate all the resources, is actually per container. You have many, many of the containers each map to uh, processes. And later on, you want to have, use some of the containers for uh, the tasks uh, that is actually running inside ORTD. So this, uh, you know, the, the gap you have to bridge. So we'll cover that point later. So there's uh, definitely this uh, architecture mismatch, uh, mismatch here. Um, so how do we do that? Uh, there are definitely there is alternative ways and also there are workarounds. So we're first to look at the workarounds being implemented. So uh, so this is quite you know at very specific level of the young programming. So uh, the main problem here is uh, you could you know right now you can uh, <coughs> you can allocate resources. Uh, uh, ahead of time, but at the wrong time when you use the resources, and but I only wanted to use, use the resources uh, by one slave demo. <clears throat> but for young currently to work, uh, it doesn't work because this, the low manager will want to manage the whole pro process life cycle. So to do that, uh, currently a few of the Applications being built actually is using this way to activate the uh, container needs. Uh, the application will start a dumb process so that basically feedback to Yarn that this container now is being uh, used by the application. So it's, you can see in the load manager, the container is running. Um, and but in reality, the this process is not actually being used by the application itself. So this way, um, 
we can satisfy the uh, Young's protocol the life cycle management requirements. So uh, uh, as far as I know, currently Impala uses this way to do the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, on the execution side. Another one is uh, you could uh, uh, probably use the auxiliary service. Auxiliary service is uh, right now mostly I think is uh, used by MapReduce. So uh, the name uh, tells its limitation. So auxiliary basically means it's uh, there to support, not really uh, to control the process execution. It's only providing some facilities for the other applications. So for MapReduce, it's more like to uh, support the shuffler service. But actually, if you wanted to use this for other different purposes, it's very hard. We tried it, but it, you know, because it's not in the, in the control pass, uh, so it's not uh, you know, feasible for, for OpenMPI. So this is a solution we're kind of looking at. Um, basically, what it does is we'll try to uh, kind of uh, to support the uh, delegation. Uh, basically, uh, we'll uh, um, try to uh, <coughs> to uh, extend it on uh, to uh, allow local manager to delegate at the execution time um, for the container to the external slave demos. So the architecture looks like this way. So how can we explain this one? Next slide, so I'm talk about a few internal uh, about load manager. So basically, there is a, some highlights there. Load manager, in, uh, in essence, is a, is a stream machine uh, managing the life cycle of the container. And also, it includes life cycle service uh, to manage of to manage each of the tasks. For example, when uh, one uh, container being asked to start, and young uh, load manager will provide the uh, localization or uh, this kind of service to, to that particular state. And also when uh, application master asks load manager to launch a container, and uh, the load manager will provide the container launcher or uh, process to actually uh, start uh, uh, your program. So uh, right now, all the containers are managed independently from each other uh, by AM, uh, uh, by the container management protocol. So I just already uh, kind of mentioned this a few uh, times. So it's just to give uh, uh, some basic understanding about this. So uh, to uh, our attention, we, uh, our, our extension we brought to you on first is to uh, allow the process associated to a container can be a service, a server. Uh, the server process is something that you, it has its own, it can start its own processes. So it's like a demo database server or anything else, like a slave, you know, open MPI or TD. Or in MapReduce could be a task tracker. So, uh, so basically we are break away from the constraint that current load manager assumes that each a container only, there is only one process running inside it. So we're trying to break away from that concept. So how do we do that? So it's a, it's a, a we're introduce, we're extend no manager in the sense that we introduce different type of containers. So to differentiate from the current notion of the container, we're uh, uh, defining three type of containers. First one is the service container, basically it's described Abstract, is a abstraction of those demo processes. And the second is the child uh, containers. Basically, is this tasks uh, container uh, in future will be managed by those service containers. But the child container uh, resource lifecycle is continue to be managed on the same architecture of YARN. So uh, we'll continue to leverage that whole thing. And uh, and the last one is the task container is the you know, current notion of the container. Basically, it's the process you're being directly managed from the application master. So to, to, to give you a very easy understanding about this one, an example for this is the MapReduce task. So it's a, okay. So, uh, So the service container already explained this. Uh, it's used for the demo process, server process, 
that can have its own child processes. And uh, the extension needed to undergo measure, though, is to extend, in, extend the current uh, continuing implementation to add a few more uh, attributes so that when a service uh, being brought up, uh, there is the metadata can be associated with that particular container. The reason being that later on when our child container needs to be delegated to this service container, we'll, we can find that, how to communicate with that particular service container. And also one major uh, change here is the container executor. So the container executor needs to be a service. So then uh, when uh, the, uh, basically service, the, the, the container being a service is important aspect here is because right now uh, the external process running on that node is uh, not running and the container extra serves the purpose of uh, communicating, managing this external demo uh, processes. So uh, when that process is being started, uh, we'll need to be able to send a command uh, and also to receive the event or message from that daemon processes. For example, um, one particular example is that I wanted to start one MPI processes, and uh, what I need to do though is to uh, uh, send a command to this uh, service demo through this container executor interface, and uh, then the service demo will uh, fork that process and send back now send back the data uh, to, the, uh, uh, to uh, the load manager. So I will quickly run through this because I'm uh, starting to run out of time. Um, so uh, child container is uh, the one actually being able to dedicate it to the service container. This is uh, the implementation architecture. Uh, the change, uh, the difference between uh, the current implementation and our extension is that we are using the delegate pattern that we branch out to the original code base. If we see that the service is actually uh, the being started on the load manager is a service container and we'll use a new uh, container launcher to do that. And uh, uh, the blue part is new uh, container executor layer. It's, uh, it will be a more like long running service on each node that it can manage the external you know, demo service. So this is the change. To the protocol, it's uh, very simple. Uh, we only added two optional attributes. When the AEM uh, application master to, uh, wanted to start the task, they can specify whether you wanted to dedicate this container to a service container. You just uh, you know, kind of turn on the switch that will dedicate to then or you know, specify the service container, and during runtime, the load manager will uh, dedicate that lifecycle master's management to that service container. So. Uh, so the change is uh, compatible to uh, the current uh, code because the protocol buffer is, you know, you probably already know this, so I skip this. Uh, the container executor extension is like this. We added a service container executor. Basically, it's a delegation API to uh, allow the uh, child process can be uh, started by a service container. So basically, it includes lifecycle methods like launch, queue, um, signal all the APIs that you know they can, can keep communicating between those. So, uh, so this is more like a summary of of uh, of this. So I just skip this. Um, last one, the next one give an uh, example of OpenMPI. Uh, example of this. So uh, to uh, tie back to my uh, previous discussion points, the first one is the policy-driven uh, scheduler is living in the MPI application master providing the scheduling service to uh, the uh, head node processes. And uh, uh, for load manager, we modified this to allow the container delegation. So during the time, during the runtime, at the node manager level, uh, the child processor actually currently is being delegated to the uh, open MPI uh, runtime. So under this architecture, we tested, we did a, quite a few uh, benchmark uh, running GraphLab on OpenMPI while uh, our work. So the uh, 
take away from this one is that what do we uh, the the degradation uh, of running a graph lab of uh, workloads on Yarn is less than one um, percent, one hundred percent. So it's uh, quite uh, you know kind of uh, small um, compared to uh, running on a native static uh, cluster. So this is the Limpack benchmark we did. Uh, that's specific in HPC. It's similar. Uh, it's less than one uh, um, percent. So the last one uh, is uh, what we have covered. Basically, we covered on the, uh, from the uh, context of OpenMPI and MPP, we, uh, we talked about the uh, scheduling requirements, how we did uh, the, uh, the extension on the uh, application master side for a group, uh, a kind of group allocation. And uh, we did the uh, continuous delegation to allow the process can be managed on the, uh, by the slave nodes. And uh, uh, last one, I really wanted to you know, give one, one slide to touch about the next step we're thinking. Um, <clears throat> uh, firstly, uh, there's, you know, this is a long topic. I'll, I'll probably skip the trade-off between the resource fairness and the, the other application of our requirements. As uh, I will specifically talk about platform resource uh, integration. Uh, resource management integration, specifically about the workload isolation and the cloud deployment. So this is one thing we enabled uh, because of our extension to Yarn is that we can uh, actually uh, to uh, containerize the service uh, uh, container, allow the application to run or managed by a, 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 a lightweight container like Docker. So that's all. So a lot of uh, MPI applications are IOs intensive, so, um, and they need a shared file system across the nodes. So mm -hmm. how, uh, how you were able to solve that, and uh, how, what was the performance? Great question. So uh, uh, I repeat, so a lot of workloads are IO uh, sensitive, and how do you manage this uh, resource allocation for, for this kind of application, right? So right now for Yang though, uh, all the resource needs to be, sorry, yeah, have questions? Leakless. Oh, okay, 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 I see. Okay, so for Yarn is a general purpose cost, uh, cluster management software. So for our, the uh, IO sensitive uh, or intensive workloads, if you uh, use Yarn to dynamic manage the resource allocation and the, the process placement, you have to do it at the API, API level. I mean, or you have a more static approach to pre-allocate the resource there. So, uh, so if you go the dynamic uh, route to uh, negotiate the resources, you have probably you know, some of the lessons we learned probably you can you can use so so basically it's like you when you do the allocation um, eventually you're gonna translate all the constraints into per container request when young resource manager gives back all the containers to you you basically look at all other containers you have and try to use a iterative approach to try to see whether all the you know, the continuous man matches all the constraints you already have. For example, you can look at, you could have one rule says that I need to have this uh, container being placed on this node, that nodes have the bandwidth at this, this, this level. For example, you know, you have two uh, uh, network cards or at the gigabytes level, blah, blah. And it's more like, you know, you have to negotiate at per uh, uh, property level. So, so that's it. Okay. Um, I have a question. So was the choice of OpenMPI as your MPI distribution driven by customers? Uh-huh. 
uh, because like MPI CH2 would be like a good bet for mm -hmm. um, many of the national labs, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's also a very good question. So let me uh, repeat. Uh, what open MPI uh, what MPI implementation I should recommend uh, to customers? So from my experience, though, uh, to uh, there are many different things you need to consider. For example, uh, for particular the topic we're talking today is to integrate MPI to run on Yarn, right? So this requirement is more like uh, you know how do you you know balance or uh, uh, make a good trade-off between uh, a more clean or elegant separation between the runtime and the API level. And also, you could uh, allow the choice for the user to pick and mix uh, whatever the other components they want to integrate together as the whole solution. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Sure, but some of the other MPI distributions or HPC tools for that sake um, are based on having their own launchers that use SSH, for example, right? Right. And so you can, getting to a point where you have um, gang scheduling with this kind of alpha model or the request model mm -hmm. is very novel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering whether or not it would be easier if you were focusing on, let's say, having an in-process in, in, in tree SSH client mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which tools you talked about launch times, for example, right. you have tools that does like a tree based yep. distribution yep. of binaries yep. yeah you really um, know uh, mpi <laughs> that's that's great well uh, uh we're if you look at the open MPI on young we're looking at a very specific use cases that running mpi on a very dynamic cluster, so you have to uh, uh make a trade off between the uh, certain requirements you us usually have for HPC cluster and uh, for the benefits of running your job in a dynamic environment like in a shared cluster or in a more, more like cloudy environment. So I'm not sure I'm making the points clear. Okay, cool, cool. Great, thanks. Thank you.